Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.5 released to the public a few weeks ago, but there's even more to talk about since the iOS 18.5 is out. What's new video. We'll talk about the latest Apple news, new features to expect soon, as well as the overall experience since we've been using it regularly for the past few weeks, not just my experience on the iPhone 16 pro max and iPad pro, but also your experience based off the YouTube community poll on the post page. At the time of this video, there's over 9,900 votes, almost 10,000 votes and 218 comments. I've gone through all the comments to determine what the experience is like for everyone. And we'll also read some of your comments toward the end of the video. So be sure to stick around for that. Now the iPhone 16 has been out for some time along with the 16 pro models, but it looks like the iPhone 16 is now the best selling phone in the world. According to counterpoint research, the first quarter of 2025 saw the regular iPhone 16 as the best selling iPhone. So it looks like this is outselling everything else. And that's probably due to different carrier deals. As I know it's free for many carriers in the United States with different contracts and things like that. But let me know if you're using an iPhone 16, 16 plus 16 pro or 16 pro max. Now, every year at WWDC, after the overall conference and keynote, John Gruber hosts a live version of his podcast called The Talk Show. For years, we would have Apple executives on the stage with him, such as the head of software, Craig Federighi, and others. Earlier this year, John was critical of Siri and concerned about the state of Apple, as many of us have been. I've gone over many of their issues lately and really have been hopeful that they'll fix them. This year, when he invited Apple executives to join the talk show, Apple declined. And this is the end of an era of Apple looking like the good guy and caring about every little detail of their software, responding to criticism, talking about how they're going to make it better. And while WWDC 2025 will show us if their software is actually better as it once was, it seems Apple's understanding of what made them cool and the best out there may be at an end. But what do you think about this? I was pretty surprised and I thought it was quite surprising that they they responded this way and just decided not to join someone that they've regularly talked to and have been friends with. So maybe we'll see them change their minds. But at this point, it's a little bit unfortunate. Now, Apple this week announced that they launched a new genuine parts distributor program within the USA and Europe. This gives more access to repair parts for iPhone and iPad when the repair shop does not have a direct contact with Apple. Instead, they can go through this website and different carriers or different providers such as mobile centrix. So you can get a genuine parts distributor and then get your parts from them. Hopefully we'll see more added to this in the future. So different repair companies companies can sort of repair phones with genuine parts more easily. Apple's also made self-service repair available to iPad this week on their self-service repair website. I'll link that in the description, but they launched this and now you can get parts for different iPads, such as the M2 and later iPad pro M4 iPad mini a 17 pro and iPad a 16. So you can get things such as batteries, cameras, external charging ports and displays. So all directly from Apple, if you'd like to do that. Now there's a new activity challenge that's taking place on June 4th, and this is actually for global running day. However, this one's a little bit more difficult to get as you actually have to run at least a 5k workout in order to get the badge, but I'll link this in the description if you want to see the different awards. And if you're someone that runs, this will be available on June 4th. So let me know if you're planning to participate in that. Apple also announced that messages via satellite and find my via satellite are now available in Mexico. This is according to a post on their newsroom. And you can see that here where those features are now available. So this is something when you're out, maybe where you have an area without any signal whatsoever, maybe you're out hiking or just in a remote area, you'll still have access if you need an additional help or need to contact someone. WWDC 2025 is less than two weeks away. And by the time you're watching this video about nine days away or so, you'll see it says on the horizon on the developer app, and you can see all of the different group labs and more. However, this year it's going to be the end of an era. iOS 18.5 is the end of a long run of software that started with iPhone OS on the first iPhone. With the original iPhone, we had iPhone OS one and two, and it seems this year, Apple will change this to match the number of the year with iOS 26. I talked about this at length in another video, but this is going to happen with all of their software. It seems as windows once did 
I get the reasoning behind it, but Apple is seemingly no longer the leader, but the follower in this way. They're following Samsung and Windows, and Apple Insider also confirmed what Mark Gurman has been saying, where he can independently confirm that Apple's 26 version branding is real. It's been found in the code of some of the different things for Mac OS and has been referenced for a while, so it looks like it's going to be iOS 26 this year, as I talked about in different videos. And Mac OS 26 will be dropping support for some Macs with Mac OS 26 according to Apple Insider. The Macs losing support are basically Intel Macs from the MacBook Pro 2018, iMac 2019, iMac Pro 2017, Mac Mini from 2018, and MacBook Air from 2020 that was Intel based. So it makes sense that they're dropping support for this. They've done this over the past, and they're probably going to get rid of Intel in the next couple of years completely from support. So all the new features are on Apple's own silicon, so this makes a lot of sense at this point. Now, as far as releases this week, well, we had a couple great Apple releases. If you use Logic Pro, there's a release there where they added some additional features on the iPad and Mac. And you'll see on the App Store, they updated this a couple days ago to version 2.2. Logic Pro adds additional features such as flashback capture and enhanced stem splitter. So some great updates here, along with some updates for Final Cut Pro where they fixed some issues. And you'll see a week or so ago, they released Final Cut Pro 11.1.1, addressing issues with MXF media playback, and they improved the reliability when adding video to drop zones in the inspector. They also have fixed issues with allow export segmentation, and this was to fix some issues that they added with previous versions. So they're really working on Final Cut Pro a little bit more, it seems, along with Logic Pro. I'm glad to see they're adding that support. They also updated Compressor with the same sort of bug fixes. Apple also released a new Safari technology preview this week, bringing it to version 2.20. They released it on May 28th, and it's available for macOS Sequoia and macOS Sonoma if you want to check out those different features and test out some different technologies there. Now, one thing I'm surprised we don't have is iOS 18.5.1. iOS 18.5.1 I thought would release because we no longer have anything to downgrade to. Apple stopped signing iOS 18.4.1 a while ago, leaving only iOS 18.5. Usually when they do that, we have maybe a week or two gap and then we'll have another release. So if we don't see something this coming week, I would be very surprised. And also Apple's working on iOS 18.6 beta one. We could see that released sometime after WWDC at this point, like they did last year. So I'm surprised we haven't seen that as well, but iOS 18.5.1 is definitely needed to fix a lot of bugs. We'll talk about in a little bit here. Now, of course, iOS 26 is the next version and we should see iOS 26 beta one on June 9th. That's what we're expecting. We weren't expecting that name, but iOS 26 should release then with beta one, a public beta a few weeks later, usually by the end of June or early July with betas throughout the summer. And then I would release, or I would expect the release of iOS 26 in September, typically in the second or third week along the line of the iPhone 17, or maybe even the iPhone 26 release, if that's what they're calling it. Now, iOS 26 is expected to bring Apple intelligence updates finally to Siri. Also some updates to calendar I've talked about before where Apple's hiring some engineers for that. You can see the job posting is still listed here if I refresh it. So it says senior software engineer calendar experience. They also bought an AI company that worked on calendars and they this week also purchased a gaming company. So we're expecting an app on your iPhone for iOS 26 that allows for games outside of the app store. So maybe they're getting into gaming instead of going to the arcade tab, we'll have a whole app dedicated to gaming it seems. Now with iPhone 17, I've talked about how I'm looking forward to the iPhone 17 Air or iPhone 26 Air, we don't know what it will be called at this point. After using the S25 Edge, I really like the smaller form factor more than I thought I would. And it looks like future iPhones though, will get a big upgrade when it comes to the camera. Now this may be a couple years away at this point, but it looks like Apple's working on a 200 megapixel camera similar to the S25 Ultra. So we could get something along those lines that helps with digital zoom, but also of course, higher resolution. And in addition to this, it looks like Apple's going to be updating the iPhone design every year now until 2027. That's according to the latest information. So all of this has me excited for what Apple has coming forward. 
but I'm a little bit discouraged with them not showing up at the talk show with John Gruber. Now, when it comes to the overall experience of iOS 18.5, Apple did resolve quite a few issues. Some people say it's a good update. Other people say it's not so good. So I've talked about before how a lot of people said the overheating issues were fixed. The rebooting issues were fixed. CarPlay is working for some. The wallpaper bug seemed to be fixed for some, but it looks like for me, some of these things have returned. I went through all of the comments today and determined how many people reported each issue, starting with the number one issue, which actually has to do with stutters or sluggish performance, but reboots seem to fix it. 23 people reported this out of 200 or so. 12 people actually reported that the phone was getting hotter than normal. So while I'm not seeing that issue too much, some people are reporting that and 11 people reported UI glitches, such as maybe touching an app, it not working, or it just not changing from light to dark mode. Eight people said the phone was freezing or crashing or restarting on its own. Seven people reported issues with Bluetooth disconnects, which seem to be common lately, whether that's from CarPlay or AirPods or something else. And seven other people reported issues with connectivity, with other issues, with Wi-Fi and cellular. So it was dropping connection and just causing issues altogether. Five people had issues with CarPlay disconnects or it being slow and stuttering, including myself. So connected to CarPlay, if you go into Google Maps, for example, it's just really slow and sluggish for some reason. And five additional people reported touchscreen issues separately. So just touching the screen, not working with or without a screen protector. Another issue that seems to be major for some is charging. I had this, I mentioned last week where I plugged it into the charger and it did nothing. I woke up and my phone was almost completely empty. I had to reboot the phone and then it worked, but some people are saying it's just not working at all. It won't charge via MagSafe anymore. Even restoring the phone didn't seem to help. Now, as far as if iOS 18.5 is stable, given the recent information, I would say not really. A lot of people do report that it's decent, but a lot of people say it's a problem as well. So depending on who you are, it doesn't seem to matter the device. It could be new or old. It doesn't seem to be as stable as we would like. As far as performance, well, for me, it's been pretty fast, but many of you reported stuttering. Some people have said they notice ProMotion slowing down more than they normally would. I haven't noticed that, but some people say it's slow. Going into different apps seem to be fine for me, but again, some people report issues, they reboot it and it fixes it. So definitely some odd issues here. As far as heat and thermals, well, let's take a look as it doesn't seem to be that hot. I have the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the iPhone 16 Pro Max here. Let's take a look. So with the iPhone 16 Pro Max on iOS 18.5, we're at about 89 degrees Fahrenheit in the hottest area, almost 90 degrees, depending where you're looking on the 15 Pro Max with the same version sitting at idle. It's at about 83 degrees Fahrenheit. So just holding it in your hand is going to warm it up a bit, but overall it stays nice and cool for me. But again, it seems seems to be more of an issue for some people and it could be your local environments where you live. It's been rather humid and hot where I live lately, but I've been indoors in air conditioning around 72 to 74 degrees ambient temperature. So in those temperatures, it seems to stay nice and cool. When it comes to battery life this week, it depends who you ask. Some are reporting improved battery life compared to last week, which is great. Others are reporting worse battery life compared to last week. 45% of commenters said that battery was good or better than before. Now, three weeks later, 61% report good battery life compared to iOS 18.4.1. while only 39% report poor or bad battery life. So it seems like things are processing in the background, improving battery life as well. If we take a look at my battery, we'll go into battery health. I'm at 100% capacity with 212 cycles, and you can see additional information here with coconut battery. If we take a look at the last 10 days, yesterday, I only had three hours and 27 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 22 minutes of screen idle time and used about 75% of my battery. The day before was a little bit better at five hours and 44 minutes of screen active time, but I used almost 100% of my battery getting six hours of screen active time on this phone is actually decent for me, but definitely not great compared to what I should be getting. So you'll see it's pretty consistent at about six hours for me most of the time, but sometimes it's three hours. So it looks like it's improving week over week as things continue to process in the background. Now, as far as benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look at those. If we go into Geekbench 6, I actually ended up running this three times again. You'll see the best result I got was the third time at 3,521 for single core, 8,759 for multi-core. That's quite good overall. 
I wasn't doing anything on the device and you can see the three results here. The first one was lower. The second one was really low. And then the third one was the best I've seen in a while. So it's very hit or miss. So this just gives you an idea of the swing or the consistency. It can be running it, letting it cool down, running it again, and then seeing what you get. So it's decent overall, definitely where it should be. So I'm pretty pleased with that in general. Now, as far as the overall experience and what you had to say, let's take a look at some of your comments. Fred T. Greco says on 18.5, my Bluetooth has stopped working reliably. Have to turn it off and back on to connect any device. Priority two said, thanks for all you do. 16 pro max here running 18.5. I've noticed that by the end of the day, scrolling gets very jittery. Battery life is great. Jay Muez, hopefully I'm saying that properly. Hi Aaron, I'm using iOS 18.5 on my iPhone 13. And unfortunately I noticed micro stutters and battery life isn't amazing. I regret updating from iOS 17.7.2. Sapperman89 said, iPhone 15 Pro and I haven't had many issues. Not big enough for me to remember. Mason L24 said, hey Aaron, I'm on iPhone 16 Pro with 18.5. Still having battery usage from device setup and updates. Is this normal? Anyone else having this issue? It's anywhere from two to 10% usage a day. It is normal and can takes weeks sometimes. So it just depends on the device and what's going on. Willie Seth 740 said, I've been experiencing a decline in battery life on my iOS 18.5 equipped 15 pro max over the past few weeks. Initially the battery life was better, but it's been draining much faster since then. Additionally, I'm still having issues with Bluetooth. It drops whenever I'm using AirPods pro and my iPhone or my MacBook Pro 2024. Furthermore, screen rotation is acting strangely even when the phone is held upright. It seems that with every update, things are getting worse. Food is Life said, 16 Pro Max on iOS 18.5. Battery's great. I'm getting two days usage easily. I don't game, just your basic emails, texting, YouTube, and checking stocks. The phone is a beast on this version of iOS. Neil 20 D said, I'm facing Wi-Fi speed issues with Mac OS 15.5 and occasional stutters with iOS 18.5 on my iPhone 14. Mohammed Amir Zaman said, battery life is phenomenal, but there are some lags, especially when unlocking 11 pro. Now, as far as overall storage, that doesn't typically change too much, but let's go ahead and take a look. Give it a second to load here. We'll scroll down and it's taking up about the exact same. Apple intelligence is taking up 6.28 gigabytes. I have debated turning this off to save some storage, but also to save battery life as well. And the total size with iOS and Apple intelligence is 18.67 gigabytes. So it does look like they've improved the code and brought it down a little bit. And then of course we have system data using about 17 gigabytes. That's normal. It goes up and down regularly as needed. Now iOS 18.5 has been pretty good. It was really great the first week, then seemed to get worse and now is improving slightly, but still has a bunch of bugs. I'm really hoping to see an iOS 18.5.1 and really surprised that we're going to have iOS 26 very soon. It's been corroborated by a couple different people at this point. It's in the code and it's pretty much a certain thing. Typically this early before or this late before WWDC will get this information and it's usually a hundred percent accurate. So at this point, I'm definitely thinking it's iOS 26 and we're going to get that version next. So that's everything with iOS 18.5 and hopefully we'll be on a new version soon with additional bug fixes and security updates. Let me know if you've found anything different or had different experiences in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.